Mueller's investigation continues to look closely at political operative Roger Stone. However, the claims Stone had ties to WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange appear to be uncorroborated after the release of text messages between Stone and another associate. One America's Jack Posobiec has more. The investigation of Roger Stone has taken yet another turn. We've been following this story closely for about a year now. And all along, our One American News sources have told us the same, that Stone was being investigated due to a strong suspicion of collusion with WikiLeaks, the publisher of government secrets. That case was strengthened, it was alleged, by an ominous nine-word tweet sent by Roger Stone in August of 2016, that it will soon be Podesta's time in the barrel. Along the way in 2016, Stone had also announced that he was in contact with WikiLeaks and their founder, Julian Assange, by way of an intermediary who at the time was never named. Publicly, Stone took to the radio waves to tell listeners that Assange had the goods on Hillary, and that it was only a matter of time before everything was released, most likely to be early October, to serve as the ubiquitous October surprise for the Trump campaign. As history shows, and we know, Stone was 100% correct in his pronouncements, and in October, thousands of Clinton-related emails were produced by WikiLeaks, stemming from the hacked Gmail account of Hillary campaign manager John Podesta. Hillary, of course, went on to lose the general election of Donald Trump in a shocking upset. However, unproven claims of criminality were dogging the new Trump administration, and Democrats and the far left soon concocted a vast conspiracy theory that the election of 2016 had in fact been stolen by Donald Trump with the help of Russian President Vladimir Putin. And in this mythology, secret hacking teams employed by Putin stole the Podesta emails and delivered them to Julian Assange, who later received the assistance of Roger Stone. And how all this occurred is never really explained by the left in their narrative, but Numerous innuendo and coincidences are cited instead of proof or evidence of any such plot. Case in point, Podesta's emails weren't protected by anything other than the word password with a zero in place of the letter O, which any 15-year-old knows how to use a computer probably could have figured that out. Podesta's Twitter account was also hacked by the internet community 4chan in the course of the election. The left has claimed that Stone lied to Congress when asked about his connections with WikiLeaks, and he stated that he had none, save a sole intermediary, through questioning and testimony so it was revealed that Stone's intermediary was Randy Credico, a Bernie Sanders supporter and radio host with loose ties to some members of the WikiLeaks organization. So it seemed then that Roger had told the truth. However, Credico was brought before the Mueller grand jury and reportedly denied being Roger's source. And we don't know the exact words he spoke. But following this, Roger Stone and his legal team have now stepped forward with new text messages, including a conversation that he had with Credico during the early fall of 2016. In the messages, Credico affirmatively states that Assange has the goods on Hillary and tells Stone not to use his name in any public setting. Stone promised not to. Just a few days later, Assange himself held a press conference, announcing he would soon be publishing Hillary-related emails. And one week later, he did just that, by releasing the first batch of several John Podesta email sources. Now, these text messages between Stone and Credico are a smoking gun, but not in the way that most in the media thought they would be. Instead, these text messages completely exonerate Stone and confirm his account of Credico being the source with WikiLeaks. Furthermore, there isn't a single message of John Podesta anywhere in these messages. If they knew Podesta's emails were the ones going to be released, you'd think they would have mentioned that. Not only does this back up Stone's testimony, this evidence may actually show that he had no real connection with WikiLeaks other than through public statements and interviews by Julian Assange himself. There is simply no record of secret collusion or communication between Stone and WikiLeaks. Yet as of yet, no evidence has been produced to the contrary. Mueller is going to have a hard time making something stick on Roger Stone if this is the only evidence he presents, along with an indictment to new AG Matt Whitaker. But there's another angle to this that mostly goes ignored. Throughout 2016, everyone thought that the emails that were going to be coming out 
were going to be Hillary's classified emails from her illegal server. Instead, this was not the case. In fact, those 30,000 missing Hillary emails have never to date been released by anyone. Let that sink in. I'm Jack Posobiec, One American News. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.